Finally, the Formula One break is over and we make our way to COTA, the United States American GP of the year in Texas. And this will be the most important GP when it comes to championship standings, as well as some of the biggest upgrades of the year and pretty much season defining. All the big teams are bringing parts here that are confirmed and that we can go over, as well as the small teams bringing parts and some of those midfield teams trying to climb their way back up to the top. It's gonna be a very interesting one. The track itself offers all kinds of corners, so upgrades will be crucial here. It's also a sprint weekend, so we're in for a lot of fun here in Coda, and I really do expect this to be one of the most exciting GPs of the year, both from a technical standpoint as well as a racing spectacle for us viewers. Right before getting into it, I wanted to thank you guys for the usual support. It's amazing to me, and thank you for subscribing. All the new subscribers we've been getting is amazing, and it means I'm doing a good job, so thank you all for that. I do have a second channel. Go ahead and check that out if you're into gaming. It's Mickey Unchained. It'll be into the description. But let's get started with the Coda upgrades, starting from the smallest teams to the biggest. Now let's just go over the confirmed stuff. We don't even need to go over the rumors and what's being talked about. So much is confirmed here. So the first team that I wanna talk about is Haas. Now obviously Haas has been big in the news, covered a video on it, Toyota X Haas, technical formation for that team. What a beautiful sight for our sport to have yet another car manufacturer and a very brilliant one that at it. That's quite the upgrade for the team. As for the car, it should be getting some minor updates from what we know, continuing on their Silverstone upgrades. They've been very lenient on it, but they've been pretty successful in the car. They are hoping they can actually overtake RB. They're not far away at all. And the Haas car itself has been pretty consistent from GP to GP. I think Coda can be good, especially with those straights. And they've been pretty good in the slow speed stuff whenever you need to brake very hard. K-Mag likes this track a lot. Nico's been pretty good here over the years. I do expect the Haas car to perform pretty well and they should have some parts coming to it. But their biggest competitors, V-Carb, is also planning on bringing upgrades. Now, it was said that they were supposed to have something in Singapore. It is now confirmed that it should be coming here in Coda. They should be picking up that Red Bull suspension, as well as trying to upgrade that aero kit around the car. They were not very successful in Spain, as we saw Ricardo and Yuki could not even fight for points pretty much. And the car itself has been very inconsistent. Sometimes it's fighting for points at the very edge. Other times it's sometimes even competing with the Sauber car. It's not been a very consistent and lovable car for its drivers. But now with Liam Lawson in the seat, can they have a more competitive lineup? What is he going to be able to do? It's going to be very telling and it's going to be a look into what Red Bull wants as well between those two drivers. The upgrade, we don't know if it's minor or major. Obviously with the suspension upgrade, it should be somewhat big for the team. It could reverse the progress they have, but at this point, they have pretty much nothing to lose. They're kind of just evaluating who wants to take the Red Bull seat or whether they want to keep that lineup. Another team we know with confirmed upgrades is the Aston Martin team, the team in green. They're bringing their biggest evolution of the year to hopefully correct what has been a pretty poor season from their words and the standard that they set in 2023. Now we know that the car is getting an evolution and there has been a back and forth between the team and Fernando Alonso on what type of upgrade path they should have chosen somewhere around midway into the season. It was said, now these are the rumored parts and I guess I'll just go over them very briefly. It was said that Fernando wanted to take the McLaren side, kind of copy the car and go along that route. While the Aston Martin team wanted to make an evolution and it seems like we should get an evolution but they're pretty confident, and I've said this plenty of times before for the British Green team, that the actual simulation data they have will correlate on track and they should have a pretty quick car come in Coda. And they're not saying that as in now they're going to be fighting with Mercedes and Ferrari, McLaren and Red Bull, but it should gain them at least two to three tenths. Fernando is pretty confident that what they've been working up should work very well. And as we've seen with all these cars, it's not about bringing the big stuff. It's mainly about putting those little pieces together, piecing up a great car, and then continuously on track being able to find the perfect setup from race to race. And Aston Martin hasn't been able to lock that down yet, but they also haven't been too far off. The car's actually been very quick in the beginning of the season, especially in qualifying. They really need to improve upon the balance of the car. Then they can actually go off of tire wear 
and the cycle continues on. It should be an upgrade to the arrow kit, expect stuff to the side pods. Is it possible we get an overbite? Maybe. That isn't confirmed, but it is going to be an evolution to the car for the AMR24. Think of this as their B spec, even though Imola was supposed to be that. But now we got the top four big teams. And I've already kind of gone over Red Bull and McLaren, but let's make it brief on talking about our two championship contenders. McLaren, as I talked about, this update will be also season defining, but it's not going to be as big as it is for somebody like a Red Bull or a Mercedes. The team has talked about a floor upgrade, and now with them actually having to kind of tone down on what they had as their DRS effectiveness in the small mini DRS effect that is now banned on their low down force swing, which wouldn't have been used anyways in Coda, but it is still something they have to kind of look into, especially for a track like Las Vegas. They are bringing a new floor here to Coda with changes to the bottom pieces, and this could be an up or a downgrade depending on where it goes from there because we've seen what teams have brought and how it hasn't worked, like your Mercedes, like your Ferrari, like your Red Bull. It's really tough this year. These cars are super sensitive, especially in the ground effect design of these cars. And McLaren's been very hesitant, but this is the track they're supposed to be bringing it for. And we can see them continuously bring parts for these next couple of GPs if they need it to try and compete with Lando. Because if a DNF happens and Max scores maximum points, it's over. There is no championship battle. So Lando needs to keep it up and they need a very quick car. They are bringing upgrades here. As well as their competitors, Max Verstappen is getting a big hefty upgrade that should change up a lot of the floor. It should be a mix of the three versions that they've brought through the season. That's going to be season defining for them as well, because if this upgrade doesn't work, it's also over for them because McLaren could run away with it. And with Ferrari and Mercedes bringing parts here, it's very difficult to judge whether Red Bull can actually fight for podium positions on a track to track basis. They've been good in the high downforce stuff, which is opposite to what they had in 23, where high speed was their best and slow was where they were kind of lacking a bit. Now it's opposite and the slow speed stuff is good, high speed not. Coda has a lot of everything, so they have to bring a good upgrade here that's going to work right off the start because Lando will be quick and it's going to be very tough to catch two very quick orange boys. They are also bringing that flexi front wing that's been talked about so much. It's going to be brought here. Let's see if Red Bull can capitalize on what's been a very up and down season on these upgrades. Now, as for Ferrari, Ferrari is bringing their final upgrade of the season. That's at least what it's been said from Vasseur. Maybe something else gets brought if there's a possibility of them fighting for the P2 position in the constructors. There is a possibility, but it also depends on what Red Bull can bring for upgrades. It's going to be very interesting between the two teams, but these parts are said to be minor in comparison to your Red Bull, to your McLaren, and to your Mercedes. Now, what that could be, it's very possibly bringing a new rear wing to the car. They just brought that front wing, which is supposed to be an upgrade as well for the 2025 car, but a rear wing update, maybe something to the rear corner, just trying to improve the overall aero efficiency. They've also been strong in the high downforce stuff. They've also been strong in the low downforce stuff. It's just that their car is inconsistent in the balance. Sometimes they nail the setup, sometimes they don't. It's just kind of how it's been for Ferrari. Very up and down. Let's hope they can nail it here because I'd love to see a big battle towards the top. Coda's a track that both Sainz and Leclerc like. It goes alongside Leclerc's driving style very well, and he loves to perform on this track. Would love to see Ferrari up there. There is a chance that they could be up there with McLaren in this track. Last team bringing a major upgrade, and for them, it's going to show them a lot in what's the possibility in 2025. It's Mercedes. Now, there have been rumored parts for this car consistently throughout the season, and we've seen them bring what I wouldn't call major pieces, but pieces that could be big and actually give performance, not actually do that. Like the floor upgrade that was brought into Spa, but in Canada, they brought little minor parts and their season was changing. Now they've been up and down a lot. They haven't actually been a consistent fighting car for the top. Maybe in Singapore, if things went the other way, they could have competed if they were better in qualifying, but they're just missing two to three tenths consistently on a track to track basis. The supposed upgrades and what we've been hearing throughout the season, it's confirmed that it's a big package and that James Allison has talked about it 
changing the body of the car, the aerodynamics. It's very possible we finally get a change to those side pods. Both Aston and Mercedes have talked about it a lot in the season. As we've seen, the overbite is clearly the best concept to have on the McLaren, on the Ferrari, on the Red Bull. Sauber has it now. Pretty much every team, I guess Mercedes has a slight overbite, but maybe another change to that undercut of the car, as well as extending the lip of that side pod. That's one of those parts. I also expect a new floor here that hopefully correlates better on track. Mercedes is going to be a big one to look at, as well as Red Bull, McLaren, Aston Martin, Haas, VCarb. All these teams are bringing big chunks here. It really is going to be one of the most important races of the year, as well as what it's going to combine for us in 2025. Will these teams be competitive? And will we continue to see a fight at the top? It'll be very interesting to see. And I'd love to hear your thoughts on in the comments below. Coda is just that track. Every year there's always big stuff brought here. And we usually see it very late in the day. So expect that that Thursday video is going to be late. It's going to be on American time. Useful for me at the very least. But expect it at a very late upload in comparison to our usual early uploads and upgrades because of the time change. Love to hear your thoughts on in the comments below. Please leave a like and subscribe. It would mean the world. And peace.